Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, welcome to the next reaction to series 2 of Tales from the Crypt. Last episode was Corman's Calamity, and that episode was fantastic. I never know with the show what to expect going into an episode, because it's such a wacky show, it's such an unusual show. Like, some of the episodes are funny, some of the episodes are more serious, but I just never know what to expect. So, when I went into Corman's Calamity, and I saw it was like a meta thing, I was like, okay, this is going to be good. Did I expect it to be as good as it was? Hell no. That was fantastic. Even editing it back, I was laughing out loud a second time round at the wife's performance, at the monsters. Especially that the wife monster at the end, in the big outfit, when it was like, huh. <laughs> yeah, I had a brilliant time on the episode. I can't praise it enough. Easily one of my favourite ones of the season so far. I loved it. I thought it was great. I'm excited to see if you guys let me know what you think on that one. This one is called Lower Birth. Now I looked up on Google, birth has two meanings. One is the ship's allocated place at a wharf or a dock. Somehow I don't think it's going to be about that, but also it says a fixed bunk on a ship, train or other mode of transport, i.e. I'll sleep on the upper berth. So if it's about lower berth, maybe it's about someone sleeping on the lower deck of a transport thing somehow, and maybe something spooky happens. I don't know. As I say with the show, anything could happen. Literally anything. So I'm excited to see what it's about. Hopefully, last one was quite comedic. This one's hopefully going to be a scary one. Let's go. If you enjoyed the video, please let me know down below in the comments what you thought. And subscribe to my channel for the rest of Series 2 of Tales from the Crypt. And there's a Patreon link down below if you want to watch a couple episodes in advance and help support the channel. This is Series 2, Episode 14, Lower Birth. Ah, oh, there, there. Isn't it just so Whoops. <laughs> Crypt Keeper here, kitties. And speaking of kitties, tonight's sickening saga should be subtitled A Tale from the Crib. Yes, oh. friends, I've got a real nursery crime for you this time. Nursery crime. It's all about the humble beginnings of my favorite horror hero. I affectionately call this one Lower Birth. Mummies? This is about kids, that shot mummy. Maybe it's just about a lower bunk in general. I don't I don't know. View with your very eyes the alarming consequences of nature's most heinous miscalculation. <laughs> Witness it's so if awful. you dare the results of the most unnatural inbreeding. See Fanny the fat lady. Like, I like the idea of freak shows in that they're fun, but they are so exploitative, at least they were back in the day. Exploiting like people with disabilities and stuff. Okay, this guy now. Guy in a nice hat watching. What do you think you're doing? Huh? Just someone with a deformity, right? Oh. Come on. Come on. Introducing okay. Fanny the Fat Lady. <laughs> So like, how is that? Like a freak show, she's just someone who's overweight. How'd you get out of there? Huh? Tell me. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, the star attraction at you know. Healy's fantastic fairway of freaks. The most alarming and unusual oddity ever to be put on display anywhere, anytime, any place. Oh. Look upon Enoch, the two-faced man. Oh, it's got two faces. Oh. Poor guy. It's weird to think that these things used to be real, though. Then I shall be happy to discuss with you the retirement of your most amazing Enoch. I can't do it. Wait a minute, Mr. Feely. Without me and Enoch, you're no different than any other two-bit sideshow. No sickles, your meal ticket's godforsaken life is winding toward a merciful end. So it's please, a person. Tell me how nasty piece of work. But it's quite a common thing back in the end that they're ringleaders and people who run these carnival freak shows. But as long awful as people. Own him, then I own you. Who's this mysterious man in a sharp suit? Why are you whipping Enoch again now? What's he done? I 
I see you prefer a lower berth. Who are you? How'd you get in here? The door, Mr. Sickles. <laughs> call me unconventional. <laughs> How about I call a policeman? Oh, I don't oh. think you want to do that. I overheard your, shall we say, altercation with the owner. It seems your days here may be numbered. Do correct me if I'm wrong. Well, where are we? Well, it just so happens I've recently made an acquisition. An okay. acquisition from which we both might benefit, if you take my meaning. When it became clear that this gentleman was going to owe me quite a large sum of money, not... Oh, because it was the mummy on that comic book, wasn't there, so... Clear that something of equal worth hmm. has to be as What's he after? What is he after? Her name's Hi. Mirana. <gasps> Mirana. Uh, I prefer Myrna, don't you? She's a slave girl, it was explained to me. Buried alive at 16 for repelling the Pharaoh's advances. Aww. Rather, I priced for playing hard to get, wouldn't you say? So does he want her for the Never able to carnival? Learn. Why is it going to help that guy? Bear children. It's a business of playing people for suckers. Don't play me for one. What do you need me for? Yeah, there's more to this than meets the, meet the eye. Mr. Sickles, as I said, I'm a gambling man. I play to win, and winners tend to make enemies, if you take my meaning. Consider yourself my agent, if you like. I think a 40% commission is more than equitable. I mean, after uh, all, <laughs> considering your present situation... And it's a good deal. That's why there's going to be some sort of twist here, like... It can't just be what it seems to be. Cool. I like the music in this. Poor Enoch. He doesn't even get out of his cage anymore by the looks of it. They won't even let him out. Oh, a poor kangaroo. Don't keep it locked up in a small cage. Some good effects on that, though, because you can see the lips and the eyes moving in the second head. <laughs> He's going to get her to get the key to let him out, maybe? Oh. He's not falling in love with her, is he? Well, I'll be good to hell. What? You're carrying a torch, that old bag of bones, aren't you? He probably sees no one else. Pacific. It's a family you want, is it? Hmm? Is that it? A normal life. <laughs> a normal life! A family! <laughs> what a nasty person. Priceless Egyptian mummy stolen. Still, surely someone would have put the pieces together by now. Surely. One should never argue with Lady Love. Start explaining, Doctor. Of course, you are upset. You have every right to be upset. Well, yeah. <laughs> you didn't win that mummy in any card game. You stole it off a boat in New Orleans. There's a curse. There's always a curse oh, with mummies. No, it's true. Whoever attempts to take that necklace will be rendered. Rendered what? You know. Dead? Unable to procreate. Oh. If you take my meaning. It's infertile. You mean whoever takes the family jewels? Oh. So they, they can't have kids or they lose the junk. They're two very different things. <laughs> You're not listening to me. I hired a man to take that necklace off. That night I found him. He was castrated. Oh, okay. Well, that's worse. father wasn't. If you take my So they're going to say, if you... He's old. 
Oh my god. He's old enough that maybe that won't be an issue, but castration's a different matter. And now he's got someone. So what I think he's probably gonna do is try and get Enoch to take the necklace off so that Enoch gets castrated and he can keep the necklace. But unfortunately, well, fortunately, because he's the douche. It's not gonna be as simple as that. You've been a very naughty boy, haven't you? Yes. Poor Dr. Clay. You two make a very lovely couple, did I tell you that? <laughs> oh, Lord. At some point, she's got to come to life, right? Why is he taking it off? You play hard to get, don't you? Why is he taking it off? Because he'll get castrated now, surely. Does he not believe it? That oh, might make sense. Oh! Oh, and she's awake now. At least it wasn't the back of the ankles, that would have made me cringe. Ooh. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the two faced man. Okay. Oh, I was going to say what's happening, but he's gone. <laughs> Buried alive and placed in this very self same sarcophagus, nope. which has been her home for the last 4,000 years. Myrna, the Egyptian mummy. Oh, <laughs> oh Lord. And they ran off together, the mummy and whatever his name was, uh, Enoch. A year later, okay. Yeah, but we met when you came through here with your sideshow last year. You had some unpleasantness at the time. Yes, oh. I never did recover my exhibits. Well, sir, that's kind of why I'm here. There's something I think you ought to see. What? What is it? <laughs> when the local boy was up and exploring, when he saw what was inside, he... Came and got us. So a mummy ran away, a two-headed guy ran away. Two-headed mummy baby in a cave for some reason. Oh, they're both there. Good Lord. Are they alive? Is that the Crypt Keeper? Is that the Crypt Keeper? He's crying. Sorry, kiddies. But that story just makes me go all to pieces. <laughs> Little terror type, though, wasn't yes, it wasn't. Oh my god, okay. Enoch and Myrna. I guess you figured out by now where I get my good looks. <laughs> Old Two Face was my daddy, and the mummy was my mommy. <laughs> She's the kid of a two faced guy and the mummy. Sure. If they'd only lived long enough to see me become a star. <laughs> We never even got a chance to play hide and go shriek together. <laughs> Poor Crypt Keeper. Okay. Okay, that was my reaction to Series 2, Episode 14, Lower Birth. And it now makes sense at the beginning of the episode, he talked about the origins of like a horror icon. I didn't pick up on what that really meant. I just heard that and then saw the mummy on the cover of the comic and just assumed it was like some sort of mummy origin story so when i was watching it i was like i don't really know what's going on here so the twist at the end is obviously that he is the the, the kid of the mummy and the two-headed guy which has a lot of biological logistical leaps there but it was a fun tale it definitely wasn't my favorite episode i don't think it was whilst the the 
origin story of the Crypt Keeper is a good idea. I felt like the episode itself was very slow, uh, on the most part. And I would have enjoyed more seeing about the monsters, quote-unquote monsters, than I did about just watching the carny workers and the freak show guy who operates it and him getting the coffin and dealing with that guy with the, the fancy hat on and stuff. I felt like whilst that was interesting, it was quite slow. But so I would have knowing now knowing that they're the parents of the crypt keeper, I think I would have enjoyed seeing more about the mummy and Enoch maybe falling in love a bit more, or just a bit more of their escapades as they escaped. She looked like they died in that cave, possibly. The crypt keeper did say that they weren't alive long enough to, to play hide and shriek with me, so it looks like they died in the cave, and that was the smell they kept talking about. Maybe because they saw the baby as well. So the baby's the Crypt Keeper, what a twist. It's so weird, actually, thinking about it now. There's two episodes in a row that in, in ways have been really meta. Episode, the last one, Common's Calamity, was based on an illustrator who made the Tales from the Crypt comics. This one was a Crypt Keeper origin story. And knowing that, I'm a little disappointed that I didn't enjoy it more. Because with it being such a big episode, it's the origin of the Crypt Keeper who we've seen every single episode of Tales from the Crypt. I love him, he's amazing, he's one of the best parts of the show. But the episode itself for me was a bit lacking. Freak show episodes of things are quite common, and they're usually pretty good material wise because you can have some oddities and there are always common themes of these freak show attractions get abused by the people who run the place. That's always the way, and probably always will be, as long as these stories are told. They're quite interesting to watch. I like the setting of a carnival freak show a fairground that kind of setting i would find really interesting but yeah like i said before just the fact that it focused mainly on the people running the place as opposed to enoch and was it marana that's where the episode just lacked a little bit for me because i don't care about the guy who ran it the abusive one who was beating up enoch all the time i was just waiting for him to die and then the guy with a bowler hat came in was it bowler hat the guy with the fancy hat and the suit came in he was a good actor. I've seen him before in something, but I can't place it. But he's a good actor. And he was a good character. But between him, the guy who was abusing Enoch, and the carny owner, it was just quite slow, if that makes sense. And I hope, I hope I'm not saying this about a really popular episode, but I just didn't care about watching them. I was just waiting for them to die. In some ways, kind of, I can compare it to Fitting Punishment. There's an abusive character... There's someone being abused, I'm waiting for the tables to turn. And so it was satisfying, like, like that episode, when Enoch got out and cut the guy and ended up killing him. Great. Love it. But I would have preferred to spend more time with Enoch to really care and see the growth in his character, as opposed to just, he's in a cage, he's in a cage, he's been abused. Okay, he's out now, you know? But the setting was great. The mummy was a really good design. Enoch was a good design. Some good effects with the, the two heads and the moving lips and stuff. And the eyes. Seeing the Crypt Keeper as a baby was cute. An interesting idea now that I know the final twist. So now knowing that, watching it again in the future might make things slightly different for me. Not that these are the Crypt Keeper's parents. But like I would have also spent, liked to spend more time with Myrna. Seeing how she went from just this vengeful mummy that castrates people to being in love with. Enoch, you know, maybe because they're both in a very similar position, both captured, both trapped using people's entertainment, who knows, but yeah, okay episode, definitely not way near as good as Coleman's Calamity, but I did enjoy myself, it was an okay episode, like I said, good settings, good monster designs, some interesting characters, nice little twist at the end, there's just a few things for me that missed the mark quite a bit, so let me know down below in the comments what you thought of the episode, that's series 2, episode 14, Lower Birth. As always, my name is Scott. Hope you guys are well. Take care of yourselves and staying safe. If you enjoyed the video, leave some comments down below. Subscribe to the rest of the series 2 of Tales of the Crypt. And I'll see you all very soon for the next episode. Bye guys and take care.